What's going on guys? This is Mike Noid and today we'll be looking back at the entire Skylander series once again. So this video is basically a collection video of the six and look back at Skylander's videos. But I also made a few additions and revisions to make this the definitive video of the series. So just grab yourself some enchiladas, sit back and relax and enjoy because this is going to be one long video man. Activision revealed Spyro's adventure back in February of 2011 at the American International Toy Fair. Known as the experience that merges the worlds of toys and video games, Spyro's adventure would feature toys with brains, toys that would remember the player's shared experience. That way, if you were to use your toy in someone else's game, your toy would still have all of your experience from before. Each toy also had its own unique powers and abilities. It was encouraged that the player would swap out different figures during levels, making your own personal experiences. The Portal of Power was also introduced as a gateway between the figures in the real world and the game itself. 32 unique Skylanders were introduced to the game including established characters, Cinder, and of course Spyro the Dragon. Before Skylanders, a new Spyro game was being worked on called Spyro's Kingdom in 2009. It was going to feature a more mature tone and would even include blood, but Toys for Bob eventually decided that the idea didn't feel like Spyro. Instead, Spyro's adventure was the end product. Spyro was reinvented to be a leader of a new cast of heroes known as Skylanders. Spyro himself was redesigned which hardcore fans seem to dislike. It definitely makes him look less of a dragon in my opinion. But this was kind of my first time where I've played something with Spyro in it so I was really not phased by his redesign. But now that we have Spyro's Reignited Trilogy out, uh, I'm definitely in favor more of the classic Spyro. So you had different options to buy Skylanders. You can buy each figure individually or you can buy them in triple packs. Single packs cost about $10 and triple packs cost about $25 in the US. Triple packs obviously cost more than single packs, but triple packs would be cheaper instead of buying three single packs. There were eight different triple packs, so that makes 24 Skylanders in total. And if you add up the starter pack and four adventure packs, you'll end up with 31 Skylanders. Of course, Wham Shell being exclusive to single packs. God damn. Now that we know a little bit of the making of the game, let's actually talk about it. The game was released on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii, and the 3DS. We are mainly going to focus primarily on the console versions for this video, but I will talk about the 3DS version in just a bit. The games came in what is known a starter pack. A Spyro's Adventure starter pack came with the game, the Portal of Power, three Skylanders, Spyro, Gilgrunt, and Trigger Happy alongside their cards and stickers and a poster that allows you to keep track of your Skylanders with those included stickers. So the game consists of 22 chapters out of the box. There are four additional levels that you can get from getting the adventure packs and putting each location onto the portal. But those four additional levels have nothing to do with the entire story of the game. The story is that chaos blows up the core of light which is a device that stops the spread of darkness and of course when blowing up the core of light all the Skylanders are blown out of Skylands and uh, the story is that they come over to Earth as toys. So you're supposed to use the Skylanders and the Portal of Power to get the Skylander back to Skylands to acquire all of the components to rebuild the core of light and defeat chaos. The story itself is pretty simple, easy to follow. If you want more lore of the world itself, you can find scrolls that get a little more into it and from the characters that you meet through the game. The characters themselves are unique and all have their own jokes and quirks. When I was a kid, I really hated Flynn in this game. He was freaking annoying and, you know, he's full of himself. But that's his character and I got used to him uh, in the games following Spyro's adventure and eventually I, I did appreciate his cocky personality. The game isn't even that long despite having 22 chapters. If you were to just go through each level without looking around, uh, it can take 5 minutes max, especially when you use a Skylander that can move fast. But exploring each level and finding all the chests, soul gems, and elemental gates is what makes the levels a lot more fun. You'll probably have to do each level twice if you want to get all 3 stars, since your first playthrough will likely consist of looking for everything to collect. 
and your second one will be finishing the level as quickly as possible. Levels can consist of puzzles that you can push blocks, connect the crystals and laser beams to unlock a gate, and use a gremlin to unlock a padlock. There are actually a good cast of enemies in this game that you can fight that consists of the chompies, uh, zombies, trolls, pirates, robots, it's crazy. I think the enemies start to get more interesting in later games, but I never felt tired of fighting the enemies in this game, which is actually really good. So the ruins in the main hub is where you go in between levels. I actually like this hub a lot. It was great to see it grow and unlock new areas that tie into where you're going to go next. It also has a lot of room for you to just, you know, mess around, uh, try out your Skylanders moves and even attack sheep. You can either play the story mode alone or with two players, which is pretty cool. The best co-op feature of the game is definitely the battle mode where you and your friend can fight each other, play football, or collect five gems first. Skylanders have certain advantages over others, so depending on which game mode you play, it could be a lot of fun of just trying out which Skylander can best the other one. Speaking of the Skylanders, there are 37 you can choose to play as in the game. Having one Skylander of each element will give you access to each elemental gate that are in the game, which consists of a hat that you could put on your Skylander, and it can even consist of a chest or even a soul gem. So it's pretty cool that you can do all this customization with your Skylander. You can even nickname them if you want to. And you can even claim ownership of a Skylander, which will uh, get you the Skylander recorded in your collection. Also, certain Skylanders can get you to places where others can't. For example, you can use either a water Skylander to swim through water, or just use one that can fly and cross over that way. Earth Skylanders are able to break certain rocks and Fire Skylanders are just able to go through lava. When you add a Skylander to your game collection, it will unlock its heroic challenge. These are challenges that will give you buffs and it can be taken on by any Skylander. These are actually a bit challenging to do. The ones I did for the video, I did at least two times each. God damn it. Your Skylanders can reach level 10 and can use money to get additional moves and upgrades. You can even choose a upgrade path of a particular move, so your Gale Grunt may be different from someone else's if the two of you were to choose different paths. Also, finding winged sapphires in a hub will reduce the cost of these upgrades, which is great. So Spiral Adventure figures all have the green bases at the bottom but you can still use other Skylander figures from the later games. As long as the Skylander is in Spyro's adventure, you can use other versions of that Skylander. So you can use Series 2, Series 3, and Series 4 figures, Light Core figures, Eon's Elite figures. You can even use color variants like Legendary Slam Bam. I mean, it will still show up as regular Slam Bam, however, but hey, you can still use it. Mini Skylanders can still be used, but they will be used as sidekicks. And then Skylanders from Superchargers can't be used, however, since their movesets have been completely changed. So you're not going to be able to use Deep Dive Gilgra in Spyro's Adventure. So I'm not going to cover all 37 Skylanders, but I will mention some of my favorites. Of course we have to talk about Spyro, it's the man's game! And there are three you can choose from. There's the regular one, Dark Spyro, and Legendary Spyro. I mean, you really can't go wrong with either upgrade pass. You have the fireball attacks that have great range and coverage, and you can even charge it up for a gigantic fireball or you can go with the charge path that allows you to stun enemies and just bombard them with attacks the flying is okay though i liked using cinder since she was able to move quickly thanks to her flying and shadow dash abilities flame slinger can do some real damage and he's great for getting through levels fast thanks to his flame dash i think air is the weakest element when it comes to the skylander selection but i really did like warnado this man does not stop spinning earth has some solid skylanders but my personal favorite is dino rang just because he was my first skylander i got outside of the starter pack the boomerangs are just a lot of fun to use, especially when you get to control them. Zap is still my favorite water Skylander. He moves fast and has great coverage when you combine his lightning breath and the sea slime. I'm kind of torn when it comes to the tech element. On one hand, I liked Drobot because of the ridiculous amount of lasers he can shoot. And then there's Boomer, who's just absolutely crazy and fun to use. But there's only one beast of a Skylander that just overpowers every single one of them. And that Stealth Elf, oh my god, she is a one-woman wrecking crew. When you pick the blade path, 
she gets four daggers that do crazy damage. Plus, she moves fast thanks to her acrobatic move, and she can regain health over time. Like, this woman is crazy. But while we're talking about Stealth Elf, let's talk about one of the methods to obtain her back in the day, which was purchasing the 3DS starter pack. The 3DS version came with her, Igniter, and Dark Spyro, which was exclusive to this pack only. The 3DS version is a completely different game from the console version, with its own story, villain, and gameplay mechanics. The 3DS version is actually pretty great since you don't have to have the portal connected the whole time. You can just choose two Skylanders to have with you and you can take the game on the go. And since you can double jump in this game, it takes on a more platforming level design and that I can actually appreciate. My only gripe of this game is that when you replay the levels, you have to do the version of the level that has the villain Hector chase you through the level and you have to complete it within a certain time limit. Like, come on, man. I just wanted to explore the level without worrying about Big Head chasing me the whole time. But other than that, the 3DS version is pretty great. After revisiting the game years later, I definitely got hit with the nostalgia wave big time. As the very first game of the series, it's a really fun game. The graphics are really outdated, but the gameplay and its unique charm is what keeps the game alive. If you want to 100% complete the game, then you're going to need at least the 32 unique Skylanders and the adventure packs to be able to do so. But if you just want to beat the game and not worry about getting everything, then you should be good with a few Skylanders. Skylanders Spyro's Adventure was a huge success. Not only did Activision sell more figures than they expected, Expected, but they managed to sell more figures than Star Wars action figures, which were the number one selling action figure line at the time. Activision sold over 30 million figures worldwide. I mean, if that doesn't prompt a sequel, then I, I don't know what does. Activision and Toys for Bob wasted no time. They dropped a sequel about a year after Spyro's Adventure was released, Skylanders Giants. So if you have no clue what makes this game different from the first, let me show you what Toys for Bob did in Photoshop. So giants are brand new toys that are slightly bigger than the standard figures that light up when placed on the portal and have unique abilities that showcase their giant powers. They are able to pull islands, jump through the floor, push heavy blocks, lift barricades, destroy walls, and throw boulders. Their stats are noticeably better, especially their health reaching beyond the 1000 mark. So these are some of the most powerful Skylanders you can add to your collection. Giants cost $14.99 in the US, which makes sense that they were more expensive since they were bigger and lit up. In addition to Giants, they added two more types of figures. There is Series 2 and Lycor figures. Series 2 figures are re-releases of 24 Skylanders that were in Spyro's Adventure. This allowed fans to get another chance to buy characters that they probably missed out on and people who had the previous versions to spend more money. Series 2 figures featured the Skylander in a different pose. Each Series 2 Skylander had their own new attack called a Wow Pal that makes them more powerful or just interesting to use. Some wild pals are really cool while some are just meh. But I admit, it was cool to get one of these Skylanders and see what their new attack was. Just like Spyro's Adventure, Giants also had a Frito Lays promotion where you can get four psychic figures, which were based on four of the Giants. Barkley, Dumpling, Mini Ginny, and Ice Mom. They just follow you around in a game like before, but if you're playing Trap Team, Superchargers, or Imaginators, they'll work as full-blown Skylanders. Lightcore like figures are just regular sized figures that glowed on the portal when placed, just like the Giants. While it was pretty cool to see a figure like Prism Break light up, I still didn't like these. They were $3 more expensive than the regular figures and didn't come with the Wow Pal if it was a returning Skylander. I mean, yeah, when you put Put them in a level for the first time, they do damage and the guy goes but that only works one time for the level. They should have just made light core figures of the 8 Skylanders that didn't make it into the game. I'm not quite sure if Activision ever said why these 8 were not included in the sequel, but I feel like these were just the 8 Skylanders that sold the least of their element. If you were collecting all Spyro's adventure figures back in 2011 and 2012, then you know damn well that Wham Shell was nowhere to be found. I kid you not. I had to buy that sucker on eBay for three times the price. So while these eight Skylanders got the boot, we got eight new Skylanders and four of them were made as Lycor too. 
what was the point? So when you add up these 8 new Skylanders plus the Giants Series 2 and Lycor figures, you have 48 Skylanders to collect. And we haven't even touched the in-game color variants. So I barely mentioned in-game color variations in the Spyro's Adventure video because they weren't that many. You just had the four legendaries and Dark Spyro. Giants is the game where they went more crazy with the color variations. So what is an in-game color variation? An in-game color variation is a Skylander that has a different color palette than its original both on the figure and in the game. I still get comments from people asking me why I don't have the blue bash or the pumpkin eyebrow or the crystal wham shell. Well you see, those are called chase variants. Chase variants are Skylanders with a different color palette only on the figure. They will still appear with its original colors in the game. I mean the most you'll get is special above their name in Skylanders Giants so I guess that's something. There are a good amount of these types of figures from both games mainly in one solid color like gold, crystal, or glow in the dark but in some cases they would do something different like the pumpkin eyebrow. Also if you ever bought a chase variant brand new then the figures would be at level 5 with 2100 gold which ensures it wasn't used but you know that can be easily manipulated of course i'll leave a link to a website called skylanders character list in the description where you can see all of the color variations but one of the ways you can tell the difference between the in-game and chase variants is by the packaging of the figure if the card matches the figure color then it's an in-game variant there are 14 in-game color variations, bringing the total to 62 for the figures of Skylanders sequel. So let's go ahead and jump into the starter packs for this game. You have your standard starter packs for the Wii, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and the 3DS that were released on October 17th of 2012. A starter pack for the Wii U was released a month later as one of the Wii U's launch titles. For the console versions, buying a starter pack for $75, you get the slightly updated Portal of Power this portal has a clear ring rather than a green ring on the Spyro's Adventure version. You get the three figures, Tree Rex, Series 2 Cinder, and Jetvac, as well as the cars, stickers, and poster. You might be wondering, does the old portal work with Skylanders Giants? It does, so they actually released a portal owner's pack. These packs got rid of the portal and included just the game and Tree Rex. So they actually made single packs for Series 2 Cinder and Jetvac, but they weren't that common. So if you were lucky enough to find them, then you're fine sticking with the portal owner's pack. Actually, the best way of buying these two figures without having a second Tree Rex was getting the Skylanders Battleground starter pack. We'll talk more about this game in the video later, but this starter pack came with Cinder and Jetvac, either a regular Double Trouble or its color variation Royal Double trouble and the platinum chest magic item it even cost less than a console starter pack at $50 so there's that so those are the many different ways you can get started with playing Skylanders Giants let's actually discuss the game itself one feature that they included was a difficulty setting you can choose from easy medium and hard and once you beat the game for the first time you unlock the nightmare difficulty I actually played the game in nightmare mode to prepare for this video and let me tell you that you shouldn't take this mode lightly mother Oh my god, <laughs> come on man. Alright, you know, that's it. So the game story is pretty similar to the previous game. You have to stop Chaos from taking over Skylands. Chaos's plan involves him getting the Infinity, uh, I mean the Iron Fist of Arcus that would grant him control of all the Archean robots that the Giants defeated 10,000 years prior. You travel with Flynn and Callie in a ship, the Dread Yacht, to each location and you'll get new people on board as you progress. I have to say, I wasn't a fan of the ship because of how small it is compared to the ruins of the first game, but I feel like it actually works since the Giants move incredibly slow. I probably would have been frustrated if the hub was any bigger, so you know what? The ship is fine. There are 16 chapters in this game, which is less than the last game, but these chapters are longer than the ones in Spyro's Adventure. I swear, it takes about 20 through 30 minutes to fully explore a level. Also, you can still use the adventure packs from the first game and unlock those additional levels. You still have chests, soul gems, and hats to find within the levels, and even legendary treasures that actually have a purpose. Use them to customize the ship, which was actually pretty nice. You also find the winged sapphires in the levels and even a new item called a Lecotron wheel. These can be equipped in the ship, which will grant buffs like getting more health 
health from food and increased damage done on enemies. You can also get buffs from charms. Charms can be earned from buying them from the shops. Bro, this one actually costs 25,000 gold. And a new mode called Arena Battles. You unlock Arena Battles from completing Chapter 4. You do challenges that mostly involve defeating enemies with a twist. These are actually a lot of fun to do if you aren't playing on Nightmare Mode. The levels contain pretty much the same sort of obstacles and puzzles that were in the previous game. You even have the Gremlin Lock puzzles, which were refined and move a lot quicker than before. You know what also makes these puzzles quicker? You can buy these keys that allow you to skip these puzzles, and racking these up will allow you to just skip these throughout the whole game. Yes, these were nice. A mini game that you can play with characters in each level was introduced called Sky Stones. The rules are pretty simple. Whichever stone has more arrows on its side when placed takes over it and whoever has the most wins. You can get more stones by winning games or buying them from the shops. You can also skip these by buying Skystone Sheets. So the Skylanders now reach to level 15 and can complete quests. Completing quests will grant them 3 ranks, bronze, silver, and gold. You are still able to increase stats of your Skylander by completing heroic challenges and giving them hats. And You can still give them nicknames and change ownership. The soul gems that are in the game are only the soul gems of the giant and the eight new Skylanders. All previous Skylanders have access to their Soul Gem upgrade in the game. Skylanders from Skylanders Giants all have an orange base at the bottom of the figure. All Skylanders from Spyro's Adventure work in Giants. Even the eight that didn't get re-releases, you can still use Skylanders from future games as long as they were in Giants. So there weren't any adventure packs for Skylanders Giants, probably because you can still use the old ones. Instead, they released two different battle packs which included two figures and a magic item, which not only lights up, but will unlock a new battle arena for a two player mode. Battle mode is just about the same from last time, but they did add a new mode called Ring Out where you have to knock your opponent off the stage. <laughs> Kind of like Smash Bros. Also, you can still do two players in story mode, which is great. So, I'm not going to talk about every Skylander, but I will mention my favorites from this game. Tree Rex may be a basic choice, but he's still my favorite giant. He allows for far and close range attacks and can sprint to make him move faster. I say my second favorite giant has to be Swarm for just about the same reasons, but he, he flies, which makes him go faster. Crusher deserves a mention as well because of his ability to separate into smaller rocks. Rubble, rubble. Oh, so that's where I heard Rubble Trouble from. Pop Fizz is my favorite out of the new Skylanders. Choosing three different types of potions make him best suited for different scenarios. Fright Rider is great as well. He's probably the most unique Skylander out there. I mean, the man is riding a dead ostrich. I mean, that's just, that's just plain sick. Hex has one of the most powerful WoW Pals from the Series 2 Skylanders. She can conjure up a giant skull that does like 280 damage. Jesus. Trigger Happy can unleash a gigantic laser beam while using the machine gun until you get, just get bored. This wasn't really all that strong, but Wrecking Ball turns into a disco ball when he rolls, which I thought looked pretty cool. And Sonic Boom can do this with her babies. So let's go ahead and talk about the 3DS version and other Skylander games. The 3DS starter pack came with Tree Rex, Cinder, and Punch Pop Fizz. The 3DS game is similar to previous games. The levels just have a few spots only giants can get to that regular Skylanders can't. Instead of Chaos, the villain is Captain Frightbeard who's trying to take over Skylands. The game actually lets you choose playing the levels normally or time challenge, which was a complaint I had for the first game. So I thought that was pretty cool that they fixed that. But yeah, you get the same platforming style just like before. So due to the popularity of the Skylanders games, we got a variety of spin-off games that work with your Skylanders collection. Skylanders Spyro's Universe or Skylanders Universe was an online RPG that used your Skylander collection as well. I probably should have talked about this in the Spyro adventure video since this released alongside that game, but it also supported Skylanders Giants figures so it still makes sense to mention here. Skylanders Cloud Patrol was an arcade shooter game for iOS devices that released on April 5th of 2012. I didn't play much of this one, but I thought it was okay at best. Skylanders Lost Island is like Farmville and Dragon City. It's an app that allows you to build a village on your own island and have your Skylanders protect the residents. This was released on October 6th of 2012 on Apple devices and then Android a little over a year later. This was actually pretty fun to come back to every day to maintain the island. I actually missed this game. They actually supported this game all the way up to Trap Team which was 
pretty surprising. Skylanders Battlegrounds, which I mentioned had a starter pack, is about defeating Chaos's warlords by using Skylanders to fight enemies in Battlegrounds and swiping them to attack and gain experience. I didn't play a lot of this either, but it was good for a phone game. It was cool to have a Bluetooth portal to use and swap out Skylanders like the base games though. So those were all the spin-off games, and oh by the way, all of these games are unplayable now, so yeah. Just like Spyro's Adventure, Skylanders Giants hit me with the waves of nostalgia. While I do see Giants as a better game with all the additions and improvements, the game feels like more of an expansion of Spyro's Adventure than a proper sequel. I mean, these games look and feel extremely similar, almost the same even. But despite that, Skylanders Giants is still a great Skylanders game. If you want to 100% complete Skylanders Giants, you will need one Skylander from each element in order to get inside the elemental gates and at least one of those a, a giant so you can get to areas only giants can get to due to their strength and size. Also if you manage to beat the game on nightmare mode you get an after credit scene with the chompies and the iron fist which I actually never knew about until making this video. Just like Skylanders Spyro's Adventure, Skylanders Giants was a successful game for Activision and Toys for Bob. The game was so successful that it generated over one 195 million dollars in 2012 and that's just in the u.s they managed to sell 500,000 starter packs and portal owners packs in the u.s and europe in the first two weeks Holy shit. And for one final big number statistic, Activision reported that they made billions of dollars from the Skylander franchise as a whole after only a few months Skylanders Giants was released. So yeah, I think it's safe to say Activision and Toys for Bob made a shit ton of money off of these toys. So naturally, a third game in the franchise would continue bringing in that bread. And it wasn't too long for another company to dive into the toy selection life gold mine. Disney announced in January of 2013 that they are making an action adventure sandbox video game that used toys of beloved characters, Disney Infinity. As of today, I can't really tell you if the game was good or not because I never played it myself, but when you take into consideration that Disney Infinity got two sequels and made toys of characters from the Marvel and Star Wars universe, it was a given that this franchise would make some money. So if Skylanders wanted to be competitive, they're next game needed to deliver and in February of 2013 they dropped the teaser trailer for Skylanders 3. <laughs> Skylanders Swap Force, developed by Vicarious Visions, features brand new Skylanders called the Swap Force Skylanders that allow you to swap their tops and bottoms with each other to make different combinations of the Skylanders' powers. These figures had magnets that allowed you to easily take apart and put together the two halves. These swappable figures were a bit bigger than the core Skylanders, but they were about the same size as the giant figures. But in the game, they are the same size as the normal Skylanders. Each of the Swap Force characters are in a basic pose, nothing too crazy so that each tops and bottoms fit when you put them together. And also, all 16 characters are male characters. Of course, the obvious reason they did that was to make swapping gender neutral, so switching tops and bottoms would make sense. You had two Skylanders for each of the eight elements and movement types, which we'll talk more about when we start talking about the actual game. So with there being 16 Swap Force Skylanders, you can get a total of 256 combinations or swap abilities as they advertise. If you include the nine color variants, you'll get a total of 25 Swap Force Skylanders and 625 swap abilities. Each figure would cost you $15 in the US. You can get these figures in single packs or double packs which gave you two swap force skylanders by the way the packaging for the swap force skylanders had a little wheel you can turn that gives you a little taste of what you can do with these figures which was actually pretty dope 
So the Swap for Skylanders are by far my favorite gimmick Skylanders. The concept itself is simple and to be honest with you, it's a little bit weird. I mean, you can make some really bizarre looking Skylanders, but in my opinion, that was the beauty of Swap Force. Not only you can play as over 200 abominations, but you can find a combination that really works well together. If I were to make an example, let's say I really like Doomstone's attacks on his top half, but I feel like he's a little bit too slow. So I would change out his bottom half for a Skylander that would be able to move a lot faster. That way I can get the best of both worlds. Just like getting 16 Swap Force Skylanders, we also got 16 brand new Skylanders and 16 returning Skylanders. The returning Skylanders were either Series 2 or Series 3 figures that got an additional title in their names. We got cool names like Mega Ram Spyro, Hyper Beam Prison Break, Thornhorn Camo. They brought back Camo! Holy shit! And that's not the only Skylanders they brought back from Spyro's Adventure, where Nato and Wham shall return as Light Core figures. There are 8 Light Core figures in this game, one for each element. They pretty much work the same way as they did in Giants. They glow when placed on the portal and the guy goes, they do a bit of damage and they cost $13. It was cool that they brought those two Skylanders back even though they don't have a WoW pal like a Series 2 or Series 3 would have. And they even made Flashwing as a light core character who also didn't get a core figure in the game. But why did they still make five of the new Skylanders light core as well? It was definitely a weird choice but hey this is the last game that we would have light core figures which I personally was totally okay with. So when you add up all the figures you get for Swap Force, there are a total of 56 figures. And if you add the 19 in-game color variants, the total comes out to 75 figures. I know the amount of figures you can buy just keeps getting bigger. With over 56 figures to collect, you could have spent a lot of money on these figures. But GameStop had a pretty cool promotion for pro members that would help you save money buying Skylander figures at their stores. The Skylanders Adventure Club. Back when Swap Force was the newest game, being a part of the Adventure Club gave you benefits like getting a free Skylander figure for every six you buy. It also gave you perks like updates on arrivals of new figures and sales, and the ability to use your power up rewards points on Skylander figures. When Trap Team was the newest game, they changed the requirement for getting a free Skylander figure to only needing to buy four Skylanders, which is pretty cool. So yeah, you get this card that indicates that you're part of the adventure club which just has your phone number on the back so the GameStop employees can log your purchases to your account but you could just use your actual pro members card or just tell them your phone number now that we covered the different figures you can buy let's move on to the starter packs Skylander Swap Force was available for the Xbox 360 PS3 Wii Wii U and 3DS on October 13th of 2013 and I knew that by heart because the day before Pokemon X and Y was released worldwide so yeah, that was a pretty fun weekend. The starter pack for the PS4 release on November 15th and for the Xbox One on November 22nd, both released titles for the two systems. The console version of the starter pack included the game, Washbuckler, Blast Zone, and Ninja Stealth Elf, their cards and stickers, the collector's poster, and the brand new Portal of Power. What the f***? So Activision redesigned a portal of power for Swap Force and I personally like the redesign. It's a lot more sleek and compact and it features the 8 elements around the base. The reason for the change was that these new portal of powers had the technology in them that allowed them to read in the different swap combinations that the old portals just couldn't do. So they didn't make a portal owners pack for this game. What they did do was make a dark edition starter pack. Remember Dark Spyro from Spyro's Adventure? Not only did they make a series 3 dark spyro they also made dark editions of washbuckler blast zone stealth elf and slobber tooth bundled them up with a huge poster that was double sided and featured the spyro's adventure giants and swap force all in a 100 dollars gamestop exclusive starter pack yeah, I didn't pick up that starter pack day one. I think I waited till it eventually went on sale. So as you start up the game, you can choose your difficulty from easy, medium, and hard. And if you beat the game, you'll have access to nightmare mode, which is just as hard as it was from Giants. Still a good thing I have a lot of Skylanders. 
The story of SWAT Force is that Flynn is going on vacation to the Cloudbreak Islands where four ancient elemental beings gather at a magical volcano and use their powers to replenish the magic in Skylands. Of course, his vacation is disrupted because Chaos's plan is to evilize one of those elemental beings so that the magic will be corrupted and he will be able to take over Skylands. Since Flynn left the old crew behind, we got a whole new set of characters. Tessa replacing Callie was probably the biggest character character change. I thought Tessa was pretty good. She had a lot more energy and was more involved in the story. Some of my personal favorite characters were definitely Sharpfin and Softpaw. Their personalities were by far the greatest for any Skylander character in the game. I I'm just saying. Also, Chaos isn't the only big bad guy of the game. We got his mom. It was teased in Giants that she would be making an appearance, and I gotta say, she looked a lot better than I thought she was gonna look. Chaos's mom, which she's only referred to throughout the game. Chaos is mom seemed to be better at being the villain than Chaos, so it was great to see that there was another threat to Skylands that you need to stop. The main hub of the game is a village called Woodbarrow. Here you find secrets such as jumping into the swimming pool and going into a side-scrolling area. You can upgrade your Skylanders here, however, instead of Persephone, it's an upgrade pod. You're introduced to it by the Rhino Brothers, which one of them becomes a salesperson where you can buy hats, legendary treasures, bonus maps, and charms. The hub in this game was definitely better than Flynn's ship from the last game. However, when you beat the game and every time you go back to the hub, this man Rufus always talks to you, which is really annoying. In total, there are 17 chapters, and 5 of those are big boss fights. So you get 12 full levels, and these levels are pretty damn long. If you want to fully explore a level, they can take about an hour to complete. Since these levels are so long, they put checkpoints midway so you can upgrade your Skylander or restart halfway in case all your Skylanders were unable to fight. You can unlock two additional levels with the game's brand new adventure packs, the Time Tower and Sheepwreck Island. The previous four adventure pack levels no longer work as levels, however you can still use them as magic items. Some of the things you can find within the levels are hats, chests, soul gems, story scrolls, legendary treasures which has a new purpose, and bonus maps. Since these levels are pretty long, it's a bit easier to miss things, so the strategy guide came in handy. The legendary treasures now act like how the Luckotron wheels worked in Giants. You can equip them in the main hub that grants you buffs like more experience, money, and health. Bonus maps unlock missions that can get you stars that can rank up your Portal Master rank which is brand new to the Skylanders franchise. The Portal Master rank increases every time you get 6 stars, and the higher your rank is, the more stuff you'll have access to in the shop and wood barrel. You earn stars from completing the levels, bonus missions, arena challenges, accolades, and post-game challenges, which we'll talk about later. A big change they did when trying to get all 3 stars from a level is that you don't have to complete a level within a certain time. Instead, each level has dares which are just items scattered around the level that you need to find. So something you might know straight off the bat with this game are the graphics. Man does this game look beautiful. I play this game on the Xbox 360 and it really hasn't aged at all and it just runs smooth as butter. I mean I'm not just talking about the gameplay, the menus aren't clunky like they were in Giants. Vicarious Visions did a phenomenal job with this game. One piece of detail that I appreciate is that each Skylander has their own artwork in the bottom of the screen where their health is. And when I say every Skylander, I mean every single Skylander. As you can see, they made unique artworks for each series of Skylanders. Of course, this doesn't improve gameplay in any way, but it's just a good example how much detail they put into this game. Like I said earlier, the levels themselves are pretty long to beat. You have puzzles you need to solve and obstacles like bombs, spikes, and green goo. And of course, the biggest change to the level design is that all Skylanders have the ability to jump now. Thank the Lord! 
No longer do we need to rely on jump pads or Skylanders that can fly to get off the damn ground. While this does make those flying upgrades pretty much pointless, it's still a welcome feature not only for better level design, but the ability to dodge attacks a lot better. And the enemy roster is just spectacular. Not only do you have Chaos's army to worry about like the Greebles and Trolls, you also have Evil Eyes creatures from the levels as well. The fact that Chaos is turning Belevolent life evil and using them against you just makes them seem more of a threat and a bigger reason to stop them. Also, they changed the design of the Chompies for this game. I honestly wasn't too affected by this, however, I do prefer the old design since they looked more menacing with their sharp teeth and claws. Here they just look plain goofy, but like I said, it's not a big deal. I had no problem beating the crap out of them anyways. The Gremlin Lock was replaced with the Shock and Bolt puzzles. I personally like these better because they were a lot faster and two players can control each of the cube things. You have two types of elemental gates. You have your standard gate and then you have the dual elemental gates that require a swap Skylander with both elements or two different Skylanders to open the gate. Remember how I mentioned swap for Skylanders had a movement type they come into play when you encounter one of these gates you just need the correct bottom half to open these gates and you'll be able to play a mini game that focuses on one of the eight movements dig climb rocket bounce sneak speed spin and teleport these are one player games so if you were playing with another player they would perform some sort of support move and it would need to recharge after some time of using it these were okay i mean mini games got more challenging as you progress in the game but they just felt kind of repetitive and it sucks that only one player can play these at a time and when you play these mini games in nightmare mode you better hope you don't get hit because you'll have to restart if your health reaches zero I didn't like to spin mini games. By the way, if you have a giant, you can open a giant chest, which is cool, I guess. They're just there to reward players who bought giant figures. Despite the lack of multiplayer in the swap zones, multiplayer was good in this game. You're still able to play the levels together and battle each other, which they added new battle packs for the game, and you're able to play together or compete against in arena challenges. The Skylanders can now reach level 20, which will be the furthest they can go in future games you're still able to complete quests for each skylander and give them hats nicknames and change ownership the soul gems in this game are for the swap force and the new core skylanders so all previous skylanders have access to their soul gem upgrade out of the box the swap force skylanders have two soul gem upgrades since they have two upgrade paths one for the top half and one for the bottom getting gold was stupid easy in this game all you need is a sky diamond and just beat the shit out of the attack dummies in the main hub you could get a fully upgraded skylander in just like five minutes so skylanders from swap force all have a blue base at the bottom of the figure all skylanders from spirals adventure and giants alongside magic items and sidekicks work in swap force and the same rule applies with the figures from future games they work as long as they were in swap force honestly i can talk about all of the skylanders from this game because i liked a bunch of them but for the sake of not making this video over an hour i'm going to talk about a handful of them. Blast Zone has got to be my favorite swap for Skylander, hands down. The man has bombs, fire breath, and when you use his bottom half with a different Skylander, they definitely get that extra boost. His dark edition looks sick as well. Free Ranger is my second favorite. His lightning bolts are able to stun enemies and his tornado move allows you to pick up enemies and chuck them. I also loved using his legendary variant as well. Night Shift not only has a vampire bite that gains him health, but you can get him extra lives which was great for nightmare mode. Rattleshake is able to get an armor upgrade where he takes less damage and increases chances for critical hits which is also great for nightmare mode. And this is Rubble Rouser. I don't necessarily like him, I just letting everybody know that that's his name. Roller Brawl is fantastic. She's speedy, hits hard, and can create saws that can circle around her that do extra damage. Star Strike was really unique because she was able to hit back a star as many times as you want. Pop Thorn may have been goofy looking, but boy did he shoot thorns like 
crazy. Windup is easily my favorite new core Skylander. I'm a fan of his look, his windup attacks, and his ability to launch enemies in the air with his springs. Mega Ram Spyro needed to be on the list. He looks badass with his horns and his wow pow is just sick. Of course, I loved his dark condition as well. Hyper Beam Prison Break wasn't really that great, but his wow pow allows him to carve his crystals into his appearance and they look just like the figure. Thornhorn Camo was just great to see, and his melons become the creepy thing ever and finally big bang trigger happy gets to ride a giant missile i i don't think i need to elaborate any further so the game gets the most post content than the last two games ever got which is the ability to replay levels in score mode and time attack mode score mode is all about getting the biggest score possible you can increase your score by attacking enemies destroying objects obtaining gold and collecting multipliers Time attack mode is basically completing a level with a certain time period, however you'll be able to pick up objects that freeze time, so it's important you choose a fast moving Skylander and avoid exploring as much as possible. Completing levels in these modes will gain you even more stars, so add that to completing arenas, bonus missions, and accolades to increase your portal master rank is definitely a lot for you to do after the main story is over. And finally, let's talk about the 3DS version of Swap Force. They definitely had a better starter pack than Giants because they included different Skylanders than the ones in the console starter packs. You get Free Ranger, Rattle Shake, and Volcanic Eruptor with the brand new Portal of Power. Once again, the game is pretty much the same as the previous 3DS games with the same platforming design. Levels do include swap zones as well, so only Swap Force Skylanders can access those. And a feature that I really appreciate is the fact that you can store your entire collection of Skylanders and change them at any time during the levels. Definitely helpful when you need to get certain Skylanders to open gates and not needing to worry about having your collection with you 100% of the time. Skylander Swap Forest is yet another nostalgic game for me. From what I've seen within the Skylanders community, you either love Swap Forest or you didn't, and I can totally see why the game gets mixed reactions. Swap Forest got a complete graphical overhaul, and most of the beloved characters from the previous games aren't here. Hell, even the levels are completely different now, since they're much longer and you can't just blow through them like you did before. While I definitely understand those arguments, I still believe what we got in return was a better Skylander experience. Experience. This game had better visuals, more exploration, tougher enemies, a better roster of Skylanders with moves that would affect enemies like slowing them down, stunning them, or dealing damage over time, a better gimmick with the Skylanders, and a huge amount of post-game content. If you weren't able to tell by now, Skylanders Swap Force is my favorite Skylanders game in the franchise. If I had to recommend any Skylander game to someone who wanted to get into the series, I'd definitely recommend this one. Not only because I think this has better gameplay and more bang for your buck, but but finding Skylanders for this game and the previous games are by far going to be easiest than looking for Skylanders from the later games. If you want to be able to get 3 stars from every level, you are going to need at least 8 swap for Skylanders. One from every element and movement type to be able to open elemental and swap zone gates. So how well did swap force do in terms of sales? It actually did pretty good, which is not surprising at all. By mid year of 2014, the game managed to sell 3 3.9 million copies. And as impressive as that is, Swap Force sold the most on the Wii at 1.6 million copies. That's actually pretty crazy since the game looks horrendous on that console. But yeah, the Skylanders franchise at this point was over $2 billion in sales and sold 175 million toys. So how does Activision and Toys for Bob continue to make more money? Yep release another game. Skylanders Trap Team, which went back to being developed by Toys for Bob, not only brings toys to life, but also brings life to toys using the all new plastic crystals, Traps. The concept of Traps is that once you defeat certain villains in the game, you are able to insert a trap into the Traptanium portal, where that villain will be saved onto the trap, and you can play as that villain alongside your Skylander. And this game's $15 Skylanders are the Trap Masters. The Trap Masters Masters are about the same size as Giant and Swap Force figures, but what makes them unique are the Traptanium weapon each one is equipped with. So before we talk about the other figures, I just have to say this, Trap
Rap Team had probably the weirdest rosters of all the Skylander games. For some reason, they decided to have only 5 returning Skylanders, which means 5 elements got 7 Skylanders and 3 elements only got 6. Okay, okay, hold on, we're, we're not going to talk about those just yet. Those 5 returning Skylanders featured 2 Series 2 figures, 2 Series 3 figures, and 1 Series 4 figure. Congrats to Gilgrunt for being the only Series 4 figure ever. We got 16 new core Skylanders as well, and we got probably one of my favorite things about this game, the mini Skylanders. So I'm sure you guys remember the sidekicks from Spiral's Adventure and Giants that you can get from the free delay party bags, right? Well, we got re-releases of those 8 figures, plus 8 new additions, and instead of just following you around, they are now actual Skylanders. I thought these were actually pretty cool, they were a lot smaller than regular Skylanders, which made them easier to carry and they were a fun new way to play as the older Skylanders. And if you happen to have one of those original 8 sidekick figures, they will also work as full blown Skylanders. Another way Activision brought new life to these old characters was re-releasing 8 Spiral Adventure figures, the Eon Elite figures. These babies are the ultimate collector's figures. The Skylanders have a very nice metallic paint job, come inside a display case with a hollow graphic background and a sticky base that keeps the figures in place. All kept together in some really cool packaging. And these Skylanders aren't just for looks, their stats are 3 times more powerful than standard Skylanders, making them the most powerful Skylanders you can use. These figures cost $25 when they first released, but there, there was no way I was spending that much. I managed to get almost all the Eon's Elite figures for $10 each during a Black Friday deal at GameStop, which is why some of them have the annoying GameStop sticker on them. God damn. Trap Team had a lot of firsts. The first time for Eon's Elite, first time to make sidekicks fully playable, first time to spend hundreds of dollars. Well, actually, that's always been the case for all these games. But probably the biggest first is the two brand new elements, the light and dark elements. I f hate these elements. Activision and Toys for Bob kept these elements a secret when they announced Trap Team, even after the game was released. The game had these elemental gates that had a question mark on them, and some villains were not trappable with any traps from the original 8 elements. Oh my god, I wonder what elements they were! Well, if you wanted to get a sneak peek, boo boo, you just need Hood Sickle to get you in. Wouldn't you look at that? Not only can we see it's the dark element, but we get a soul gem of a new Skylander. Way to keep these elements a secret. Activision. For the light and dark elements, they release one Trap Master and one Core Dragon Skylander for each. You can get the Trap Masters in their respective adventure packs with a Trap and the Core Skylanders on eBay for 7 times the price. Yeah, they did not release a bunch of toys from these two elements, which is why prices for either of the Skylanders or Traps are pretty expensive. So when you calculate the total number of Skylanders, at least the ones on the poster, there are 57 in total. And then when you add up the 8 Eons Elite and the 15 in-game variant figures, there are 80 Skylanders to collect. And if you think that's a lot, we have to add up the different trap variations that you can get, which adds up to 60 traps. If you count the 3 legendary traps and the Easter Bunny trap, and add up the 4 adventure pack figures, plus the 4 magic items, oh yeah, we can't forget about the legendary variant of the Hand of Fate, the grand total comes out to 149 figures. That's a lot of figures, man. While I do like the trap gimmick a lot, I felt pretty burned out at this point. There were just too many toys to buy for one game, and I feel like parents felt the same way as well. I mean, at this point, you have Disney Infinity releasing Marvel figures, and Nintendo has stepped up into the arena with Amiibo. The Toys to Life market is beginning to run a bit thin. But let's just assume you chose to buy a blue crocodile and artichoke over Spider-Man and Mario. What starter packs were available? Skylanders Trap Team release on the Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3, PS4, Wii U, and 3DS. And the Wii again. It's 2014 and they're still playing Skylander games on the Wii? There's two reasons why I felt like that happened. One, the Wii U as we all know didn't sell too well in its lifetime. People thought that the Wii U was just a accessory for the 
the Wii rather than a brand new console. So that left a lot of people sticking with the Wii. And the second reason was how popular Skylanders was on the Wii, since Swap Force did sell the most copies on that Dust Collector. Even though the game looks disgusting, I have to give it credit, it at least runs okay. Also, if you bought a Wii starter pack, you also get a download code for the Wii U version. I mean, I guess this was a way to get people to want to upgrade to the Wii U. The Wii version is playable on the Wii U, so if you own a Wii U, you can play both versions on your console. The standard starter pack contains the Skylanders snapshot and food fight, a water and life trap, the game, the poster, cards, stickers, the Traptanium portal, and the trap tray. The Traptanium portal, yes, another brand new portal, is my favorite portal in the Skylander series. You have a cool color shifting ring around the base, and the villain vault at the front where the villain you have trapped can talk to you. Your health is low, Skylander, and you have a queen at the ready. Need I say more? That was truly a golden era, and now I must rest. This place is pretty cool. I mean, it's all dark and stuff, and there's nothing in here. Wait a minute. It's not cool at all. This feature might annoy some people, so it's a good idea that you can turn off the audio in the settings. The trap tray is a piece of cardboard with holes where you can keep all of your traps. I really like how this was included with the starter pack. My only gripe with the trap tray is that over time they will start to bend after pushing down the traps multiple times. I just ended up taping another piece of cardboard underneath and cut some holes into it so it would have some extra support. Of course they brought back the dark edition starter packs for the consoles. These contain dark versions of snapshot, food fight, and wildfire, a double sided poster, and three traps, one of them being the ultimate chaos trap. This starter pack was a way to play chaos as quickly as possible since the standard Chaos Trap came out a bit later. And finally, we have to talk about the tablet version starter pack. You get pretty much everything like in the standard starter pack, however you get the Bluetooth portal and controller. As the name suggests, the tablet starter pack was meant for tablet users to play the full Trap Team game, either with the controller or touch screen controls. With the portal, you can use Skylanders and traps like the console versions, or when you take the game on the go without the portal, you can use the instant snapshot. The controller that comes with the starter pack can be housed in the portal, and it's actually quite comfy. It's definitely a bit small for my likings, but I can use it for a good amount of time. As you can see, they base the controller on the Xbox's controller, not only because you need to use batteries, but also they have the same layout, which is cool. I just want to know something. Why did they include the right analog stick? I'm pretty sure we just smashed a primary button to open hats and chests, so we never used the right stick. Now you might be thinking, it it's so you can use the controller and all the games, dum dums. But here's the thing. You can't use the controller or portal outside the game. You can only use it in Trap Team. I mean, Activision made it possible to use other Bluetooth controllers in the game, yet you couldn't use the one that came in the starter pack outside of the game. Speaking of the app, Activision shut down the server so you can't even play the game anymore. It, it's a shame, man. Like, these portals and controllers are great, but now they're reduced to bricks. Thankfully, if you want to play the full game portably, you can use Remote Play on the PS4 and play on your phone using a PS4 for controller or the PlayStation Vita. So I think we covered all the starter packs. Let's talk about the game. Same deal with the other games. You can choose your difficulty from easy, medium, and hard. And if you beat the game, you unlock nightmare mode. Now going through the levels, nightmare mode isn't that bad. You can switch to your villain when it's starting to look dire for your Skylander. I mean, just let it eat up some hits and take out the baddies. You're pretty much good. You just need to find some food or you can use broccoli guy to heal up your Skylander. But once you get to the boss fight, its nightmare mode shows its true colors. Yeah, Chaos killed all of my trap masters in that fight. The story of the game is that Chaos blows up the Cloud Cracker prison, which holds the villains you need to capture, including the Doom Raiders. Oh, by the way, this explosion also caused the light and dark elements to be released from Skylands. Uh, like that makes sense. Chaos was hoping that the Doom Raiders would work for him. However, they turned on him. So Chaos decides to help you catch all the Doom Raiders. And once you do that, he takes over the Doom Raiders plan using the ultimate weapon that ran on Traptanium and 
cheese. Anyways, you still have Flynn and they brought back Callie and Persephone and introduced Buzz and Mags. Man, I personally don't like Buzz or Mags. I find them pretty annoying. But you know what? I feel like that's just me. The villains are the real stars of this game though, especially the Doom Raiders. I except the Gulper. I, I couldn't give a f about him. The Doom Raiders felt like bad dudes. Some of them clashed with each other like Wolfgang and Golden Queen. Even when they realized they were getting picked off, you can feel the tension build and Wolf Wolfgang goes into the future and said, F this, there ain't no Skylanders in the future. <laughs> That's where you're wrong, kiddo. Ha <laughs> ha, god damn it. The main hub of this game is the Skylanders Academy. I personally think this is one of the weaker hubs of the series. Don't get me wrong, I like the fact that you can explore and find hidden areas, but Skylanders just move so damn slow in this game. It, I mean, it's just awful to get from point A to point B, you know? You can upgrade your Skylander, you can access the villain vault to change out villains in your traps, you have shops and access to the Skeleton Showdown mode. This mode is stupid easy, even on expert mode, and I didn't find it all that fun to be honest with you. In total, there are 18 chapters, each with villains to capture, and they're about 40 minutes long if you were trying to fully explore everything. There aren't any checkpoints like there were in Swap Force, but you can still upgrade your Skylander by finding Persephone about midway through the level. You can unlock four additional levels with the game's brand new adventure packs, which also had villains to capture, which meant you weren't going to be able to capture all the villains without these adventure packs. Isn't that nice? I mean, before it was cool that the adventure packs were optional. You didn't really need to buy these to enjoy the game, but since Trap Team is focused on capturing baddies, you're not even getting that full experience since six villains are locked behind these expansion packs. I think what's worse is that the fact that they put the Chompy in the Mirror of Mystery expansion level, which is probably a villain people would really want to play as. Some of the things you can find within the levels are a hats, chests, soul gems, story scrolls, legendary treasures, and the winged sapphires. Legendary treasures are used to upgrade the academy, sometimes just for decorating or adding a whole other area. The portal master rank makes a return. You increase your rank by getting stars and you get cool stuff like experience, hats, and trinkets. Trinkets are pretty much like hats except they are equipped on the Skylander somewhere besides the top of their head. Just like hats, I didn't use trinkets but they add buffs to your Skylander as well so that's cool. The game looks good, it pretty much looks like Giants but more HD. Just like Swap Force you can jump in this game but it's really rough looking. It's like the game is trying to catch up with the Skylanders so the game does this jolt every time you jump to a higher platform. Of course you have your jump pads and push blocks throughout the levels. They brought back the gremlin puzzle but now he has a jetpack. Yeah, I think I'll skip these. They brought back Skystones, now called Skystone Smash with updated rules. Yeah, I'll skip that too. You also have these troll radios in each level that can get you gold from where you can switch to the right channel. You also have villain chests that only villains can open to get even more gold. And finally, you have the Traptanium Gates and Traptanium Crystals that only Trap Masters can interact with. It's like the Feet of Strength from Giants but with the Trap Masters. But did they really have to make Elemental Gates exclusive? Exclusive to Trap Masters? Activision really got mad whenever they realized that people can just use their old Skylanders to unlock elemental gates in the new game, so they wanted to make sure you would at least buy one Trap Master of every element if you wanted to open these gates. Alongside doing more damage to trappable villains, Trap Masters are overpowered, while core Skylanders feel weak and have no purpose in this game. It's honestly kind of sad, especially when you consider the fact that Trap Team is the last time we would see core Skylanders. We've talked about the villains so far, I mean they are easily the best part of Trap Team. Like I said, you have 46 different villains you can trap and play as, and instead of health, they have a timer on them, and when the timer runs out, they will just go back into the trap. You have to wait for the timer to replenish, and then you can play as that villain again. And all the villains have their own different movesets and personalities. Most of the villains are minions that you fight throughout the game. It just so happens that the one you catch is special or something. Like what exactly makes this cross crow different from the other cross crows you fight? Thankfully, we do have big boss villains to catch, which are the Doom Raiders and Chaos. These villains have three attacks rather than two and are much stronger than the regular villains. But but regardless of villain class, all villains have a special quest in the levels that allow you to make them stronger and change their color. Some quests are pretty simple, you just need them to show up in front of the person who needs them and they get the upgrade. But there are times where it takes you out of the level, makes you wait at a loading screen, and do these 
tedious mini games. Listen, Swap Force got criticized for doing this with swap zones, but at least they didn't make you sit at a loading screen, and those games were somewhat enjoyable. Here they're too long and boring, especially the Brawl and Chain quest. Finally! I just wanted to point out that if you have one of the traps that have an in-game color variant villain, doing the quest will evolve the villain, however the color won't change so you can still enjoy the color difference. Like I mentioned before, you are able to catch a villain after defeating it using the correct elemental trap, and there are 60 to choose from. Bro, can someone explain to me why we need 6 magic traps? There are only 3 villains for this element. I guess it's cool that we have options but still like why would they only make three traps for light and dark when there are four villains in each <laughs> this makes no damn sense arena challenges are back and hey they even feature brock again and they even have a new mode called chaos doom challenge it's basically a tower defense mini game where you can build towers and try to stop enemies before they try to destroy a box that contains a dripped out enemy this mode is pretty fun it's pretty much impossible to stop an enemy destroying a box in nightmare mode though the mystery box of doom is under attack okay that's like the fifth time they freedom man come on two players can still play together in the story arena challenges and the chaos doom challenge it just honestly sucks that they got rid of the mode where you can fight each other i felt like this was a staple of the games being able to see which skylanders were better in 1v1 competition it was definitely a dumb move to take this away okay look i have to bring this up eventually because it's really hard to overlook when you play trap team this game is filled with bugs. As much as I appreciated Hood Sickle's ability to find a way to go into the dark gate, I don't think it was intended. Besides, that's one of the harmless bugs. During my playthrough, I encountered multiple bugs, even ones that prevented me from beating levels. What the hell? Why didn't I level up? Alright, fool, I almost got you. Yo! Come down already, man. What? Wait, is he stuck? Hurry up, dude. Quit playing, bro. Please come down. Well, this sucks. Did she really just disappear? Games sometimes have bugs in them, and that's fine. But the amount of game breaking bugs in Trap Team is ridiculous. Toys for Bob really should have fixed these bugs before putting out this game. How do they miss these bugs when testing this game? I don't understand. I don't know, I want to say that maybe this game is so glitchy because it needed to be on the Wii as well, so they just didn't have time to polish the game. But still, this was definitely hard to play sometimes. So Skylanders can still reach up to level 20, you can equip hats and trinkets, look at their stats and toy code, give them nicknames, and change ownership in the Skylanders menu. Also, you're able to equip hats and trinkets to villains and give them nicknames as well. They got rid of quests from Giants and Swap Force, which kind of sucks though I didn't really miss it that much and finally the soul gems you find in the game are for the trap masters and the new core skylanders skylanders from trap team all have a red base at the bottom of the figure and eons elite figures have a clear base all skylanders from spirals adventure giants and swap force alongside magic items work in trap team even though I didn't get the full roster of skylanders from trap team I did get a good amount and I definitely have some favorites gear Shift had a cool move set. You can use your giant gear in different ways to better suit yourself in enemy scenarios. Enigma is probably the coolest looking Skylander. Half his body is translucent and looks mysterious. Nightlight is able to quickly attack with sword slashes and does powerful light attacks. Plus he can fly and it doesn't take up a move slot. Blades is pretty cool. You can shoot out blades and send them flying at enemies with his tornado and wing attacks. His legendary variant looks great as well. Deja Vu is a very unique Skylander. She can summon her past self that follows you around and deals damage. And she also has a legendary variant that looks great. And then Tidal Wave Gilgrunt's WoW Pout is just too badass. So we gotta talk about the 3DS version of Trap Team. I was actually looking forward to the 3DS version. Since we were getting the Chaos Trap, it meant that they were 
getting Chaos in the 3DS version for the first time, since they've done a pretty good job with making the toys compatible in the 3DS version. Well, I was wrong, because traps aren't usable on the 3DS version. The starter pack comes with Gusto and Barkley, with the Giants version of the Portal of Power, and even the poster that comes with it doesn't have the villains on it. So the 3DS version gets its own villains, a total of 14 with the main villain being Dream Sheep and you trap them using the bottom half of the 3DS screen. These villains were not memorable at all, and their goofy names didn't help them one bit. And what makes them worse is that you don't even get to play as them. They just do a generic super attack, and then they go back to the screen to recharge. On a positive note, if you went for the 3DS version, then you were going to save money because you didn't need the traps. But you were definitely losing out on what made Trap Team special. The platforming is just about the same. The adventure packs aren't like the traditional levels. There are more like challenges. Overall, I think this is my least favorite 3DS Skylander game, and you have Boris, Blister Bottom, and Russell Purple Stash to blame for that. I enjoyed Skylander's Trap Team when I first picked it up in 2014, and I still got enjoyment out of it replaying the game today. Being able to trap and play as villains is what makes the game a lot of fun. However, what holds this game back for me are the fact that Skylanders move like snails, core Skylanders are an afterthought, and the game is a buggy mess. If the game didn't have those issues, I probably would have liked Trap Team even more than Swap Force. There's a bit of post-game content after you beat the game. You get access to the fourth star you can earn from completing more dares, but that's about it. If you want to get all four stars in each level, you're going to need at least one Trap Master from each of the 10 elements, and at least one Trap of each element so you can be able to do the villain quest. So I couldn't find anything specific on how well Skylanders Trap team sold, but in terms of the toys, Skylanders was still doing well despite the amount of competition there was. As of February 2015, the Skylanders series achieved $3 billion in sales and sold 250 million toys. So of course, with that kind of success, Activision wanted to continue to make more money off of this series. So a new game for 2015 was in the works. It was rumored before the announcement that a Skylanders game that featured vehicles was going to be the next gimmick of the game and there was some mixed reaction Skylanders nuts and bolts nah Skylanders superchargers Skylander Superchargers feature vehicles that are paired with their respected drivers, the Superchargers. The Superchargers are the only type of Skylanders in this game. There are no new core figures, no Lycor, no Trap Masters, Giant, Swap Force, nothing. Honestly, they just kind of work as core figures if you think about it since they're the only Skylanders of the game. They are about the same size as core Skylanders and are smaller than the Giants, Swap Force figures, and Trap Masters. The biggest difference of Superchargers are the bases. I really like the engine bases and their elements surrounding it, but it is pretty sad that they got rid of the color bases. Over half of the superchargers are brand new characters, while eight of them are returning Skylanders but have updated movesets to make them feel new, but still have the same personalities. Activision must have really loved Gilgrunt since this guy has gotten figures in almost every game. There are 20 superchargers in total, light and dark getting the least amount of figures once again. Since there aren't any types of other figures, the game doesn't have any areas or gates that can only be accessed by certain Skylanders. Any additional areas or gates can be unlocked through the Superchargers vehicles. Like Skylanders, vehicles have elements. Each vehicle also has one of the three terrain types, land, sea, or sky. Fire, earth, undead, and tech elements are land vehicles. Air, life, and light elements are sky vehicles. And water, magic, and dark elements are sea sea vehicles. Vehicles are a big milestone for the Skylander series since they are the first and only figures to have movable parts. Not all of them have movable parts, specifically some of the sea and sky vehicles, but for the most part, you have rolling wheels, spinning gears and blades, movable fins, and even flappable wings. Honestly, these vehicles are pretty cool. I would have gone crazy over them if these came out when I was a kid. Vehicles are the same size as
has the superchargers, so you can't put them inside the vehicles. Which makes sense. Skylanders would have need to be smaller or the vehicles needed to be bigger, which wouldn't be too practical. So keeping both figures the same size was the best move, in my opinion. Since each supercharger has a vehicle, there are also 20 vehicles in total. Alongside superchargers, we got six new Eon Elite figures. Dino Ring, Slam Bam, Boomer, Zook, Ghost Roaster, and Voodoo were packaged in a display case with a holographic background and were three times more powerful than regular Skylanders. Not only did they have a fresh coat of metallic paint, their figures were updated with powerful looking weapons which makes them even cooler. Let me give a quick shout out to Sunburn who is the only Spyro's Adventure Skylander to not get another figure. So if we tally up the figures, we have 20 superchargers, 20 vehicles, and 6 Eon's Elite figures, making it a total of 46 figures. And if we add up the 14 color variant superchargers, the 12 color variant vehicles, and the 4 trophies which we'll talk more about later, the grand total comes out to 76 figures. That's way less than Trap Team's total, my god. So superchargers cost $13 and vehicles cost $16 by themselves. I managed to get my hands on a brand new thump truck so we can see what we get if we bought this back in the day. You pretty much just get the figure and the sticker sheet. There's a reason why Skylander figures no longer came with a stat card, which we'll talk about later. Skylander superchargers had adventure packs, or at least something equivalent to them, the supercharge action packs. There are three different action packs, each of them including a supercharger, a vehicle, and a racing trophy. These racing trophies unlock new racing courses and allow you to fight villains that you can capture and play as in these courses. We'll talk more about the racing part when we talk about the game, but these trophies are essential if you want to play all the tracks. So what starter packs are available for superchargers? Skylander superchargers came out for the Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3, PS4, Wii U, and iOS devices. The Wii and the 3DS got a version called Skylander Superchargers Racing, which we'll talk about later. The standard starter packs for non-Nintendo consoles came with Spitfire, Super Shot Stealth Elf, Hot Streak, the game, the poster, stickers, the brand new Portal of Power, and a pack of two cards for Skylanders Battlecast. This is the final portal they would make for Skylanders. As you can see, you have the engine where you put in your trap, and the base looks like pavement, which fits the vehicle theme really nicely. I really like this portal, however, it's personally not my favorite. What can I say? I'm a fan of the light shows that the other portals put on. It would have been cool if they made the flames light up at least. So Supercharger's starter packs came with two cards from the brand new mobile game, Skylanders Battlecast. This mobile game brought cards to life. You were able to use your phone's camera to scan in your cards using the trading shield that you can use in the game. No matter which starter pack you got, you always got Spitfire and Stealth Elf. So if you wanted more cards, you needed to buy booster packs and decks. So if you guys have been keeping up with the previous videos of Skylanders that I've been putting out, you know I never really talked about the stat cards that came with each Skylander. That's because they really didn't do much. I mean, they look cool and all, and they were another way to keep track of your Skylander collection, but that was about it. With Skylanders Battlecast cards, you can play a Skylanders themed card game. I wish they went further with Battlecast and included character cards with Skylanders alongside the sticker sheet. That probably would have got more people into the game. Like, I know you didn't need the cards to play the mobile game, but I mean, it's still nice to have these physical cards that you can collect and trade. By the way, the app shut down a few years ago, but you can still play the game with the actual cards if you manage to find the official rules. I mean seriously, does anyone know where to find the rules to play this game? I really want to know. Please let me know in the comments. Dark Edition starter packs made a return. You get dark versions of Spitfire, Stealth Elf, Hot Streak, and Sea Shadow, which isn't Stealth Elf's vehicle. And you get the Chaos Trophy, which allows you to play as Chaos instantly in Sky Races. Of course, they released this trophy a few months later by itself, so you didn't need to get the starter pack. The Wii U had a slightly different starter pack than the other console versions as this is when the Skylanders experience will be split from here on out, depending on what console you play Skylanders on. 
Activision and Nintendo partnered up to bring two popular Nintendo characters to the world of Skylines, Donkey Kong and Bowser. Bowser is always my favorite. I don't know why people say that I look like Bowser. So Donkey Kong and Bowser have become Skyliners, and if you're confused on how that happened, you can read this comic. Both of these characters have their own vehicles, which by the way also makes them the only Skyliners that don't have matching elements. DK is a life Skylander with a tech land vehicle, and Bowser is a fire Skylander with an air sky vehicle. These figures also work as amiibo by turning their bases to switch between modes. So it's pretty cool that you can use these figures in Skylanders and then switch over to Smash Bros and use them as amiibo fighters. Since these are Nintendo characters and Nintendo is very protective of their IPs and like to keep their characters on Nintendo devices, well, usually, Turbocharge Donkey Kong, Hammer Slam Bowser, and their vehicles Barrel Blaster and Clown Cruiser can only be played on Nintendo consoles. If you try to play them on other consoles, you would get an error message that told you to go get a Wii U, you f***ing loser. Now don't get me wrong, Donkey Kong and Bowser are very cool to play as in this game, but I can understand why players would be upset by not being able to play as every character. From this point on, you need to ask yourself, do I want better graphics, or do I want to be able to play as every Skylander? At first, it was okay since Donkey Kong was available only in the Wii U starter pack and Bowser was available in the Wii and 3DS starter packs but then they released them separately so it's possible that someone bought these thinking they would work on an Xbox or PlayStation. I know the packaging makes it clear that these figures only work on Nintendo systems but some people don't read man. The Wii U also had a Dark Edition starter pack with dark versions of Donkey Kong and Barrel Blaster instead of Stealth Elf and Sea Shadow. And finally, the mobile starter pack comes with the blue Bluetooth, Portal, and Controller, alongside Spitfire, Hot Streak, and Stealth Elf. The main difference with this starter pack than Trap Team starter pack is that you were able to play Superchargers on compatible iPhones, iPods, or iPads instead of any tablet to play Trap Team. I mean, it doesn't matter anyways, you can't play Superchargers on iOS devices anymore since their servers shut down, so if you want to play on the go, you have to play on PlayStation using Remote Play. So if you've been playing Skylander games every year when they have came out, you probably own a bunch of portals by now. Well, good news is that Skylander Superchargers was made available digitally. All you need was a portal of your choice and you're set. Instant Spitfire and Instant Hot Streak was made available for you if you didn't have any figures yet, which is actually pretty cool. If you were using a portal from Spyro's Adventure or Giants, you wouldn't be able to use Swap Force figures since portals have been updated since the third game to support them. Bro, it's 2021. Why is this game going for 50 bucks still? So let's talk about the game. I never completed Superchargers when it first came out, but that's okay. Nightmare Mode is available to you, regardless. Don't ask me why, Superchargers was the only game that made Nightmare Mode available out of the gate. Normally, you're greeted by Eon at the beginning of the game. Not this time. It never happened. Chaos has gone completely insane and is just sucking up Skylands using the Sky Eater that's powered by the darkness. This is probably the best story of the entire franchise. You feel an urgency to stop Chaos as soon as possible and for a moment you feel defeated when the Sky Eater attacks the Skylander Academy, destroys the core of light, and nearly kills Glumshanks. The darkness is the true villain of the game and it's the reason why Superchargers is the only game where Chaos isn't the final boss. In fact, Chaos gets actual character development. Oh my god, I actually give a sh now. There's also a few good callbacks to the previous games like the Core of Light from Spyro's Adventure, the darkness asking Chaos to say hi to his mother for him, and even the actual figures themselves. Are you a fire, water, air, earth, life, undead, tech, magic, light, dark, legendary, giant, swap, or trap team, or are you <gasps> an elite? There's not many new main characters in this game, but the biggest one has to be Pandagast. Pandagast is in charge of the racing mode of Superchargers and even has a few parts in the main story. You can go talk to him to race in the main hub of the game, the Skylander Academy. Here you're able to upgrade your Skylanders and vehicles, go to test areas for each type of vehicle, use a Greeble dispenser to test out your Skylanders moves, decorate the place using legendary treasures, buy hats, use a 
wishing well, take on the vehicle elemental gates, and try challenges from operative 11 3 fits. The vehicle elemental gates, there are 10 of them, one for each element, and completing them will earn you experience and hats. You can talk to Grizzo to change the gate to the element of the vehicle you currently have on your portal, or you can just find each gate in the levels. Operative 11 3 fits is in charge of giving you challenges for each supercharged pair of Skylanders and their vehicles. It's just another reason to get you to buy the Skylander and vehicles, but hey, it's extra content. So this game has by far the most chapters out of any Skylander games, reaching a total of 52 chapters. The reason it's a big number is because each area has like 3 or 4 chapters within them. Even some chapters take place in Skylanders Academy. There's really like 13 areas in total to explore, since the levels were designed by Vicarious Visions, the levels are over an hour to explore. I mean each chapter takes like 5 to 20 minutes to finish, but each area has so much to do it will take you some time to be with that being said, the areas are some of the best areas of the entire franchise. Just to highlight a few areas, Spellpunk Library throws you into the books where you play in 2D platforming levels, and even an arcade shooting style level with a sky vehicle. Gadfly Glade shrinks you down to fight bugs and bottles, Captain Clux Chicken HQ is just wrong but funny, and Monstrous Isles turns you into a kaiju. As fun as these areas are, I feel that they went a bit overboard with the vehicle areas. The way you get 3 stars now is by completing the 3 vehicle areas. You will always have to do land vehicle areas since the game requires you to at least have one, but sky and sea vehicles are optional. These areas are great ways to play with vehicles, collect gear bits, and earn upgrade parts for each of them, but most of them, if not all of them, overstay their welcome. I mean the levels are already long enough as it is, but having to go through each of these areas just gets tedious. These would have been a lot better if they were shorter, but overall, I, I like them. You also have gates you can find in each level that takes you to some sort of puzzle or challenge you can complete to earn rewards. Each area has chests, piñatas, and presents that could contain gold, experience, stardust, and even hats. Stardust is used to help your portal master rank grow, along with earning stars from each level. This is one of my favorite Portal Master rank systems of the series. Not only is it easy to rank up, but you're able to choose power-ups that will best help you in the game. There are also some power-ups that benefit you when you are playing in Nightmare Mode like I was, so this Portal Master rank was very helpful. The reward objects that I just mentioned are not required to complete a level, but the spin chests are. Also, you're able to find soul gems, winged sapphires, story scrolls, legendary treasures, and wishing stones. The wishing stones are used to obtain more hats, which is cool. Like every Skylander game, you have enemies to fight and puzzles to solve in order to progress. The lock puzzle in this game uses a gremlin, except now he is in a little car. And hey, you can do two players, which is pretty cool. Sky Stones makes a return. It pretty much works like the last Sky Stones game from Trap Team, only this time you can charge up your supercharger's card for a special move. I personally didn't stop and play these, they weren't required to do, and they they would have taken me much longer to complete the levels, but it's pretty fun. So that's pretty much the story gameplay. Let's talk about the racing side. So you can access the racing mode from the main menu or the Skylander Academy. There are a few different options here. You can do online races, single races, time trials, boss pursuits, super villain, and mirror cups. Can't really do online races since there's no one to beat, but the rest is still possible. Single races are straightforward. You can race against super use and another player in a racetrack of your choice. You only have access to two racetracks of each vehicle type, so to unlock the other tracks, you need the trophies. Speaking of the trophies, you need them to race against the villains and capture them. You also need them to compete in the Super Villain Cups, which puts you in a series of four races against the villains, and once you beat a cup, you will be able to take on Mirror Cups. So basically what I'm saying is, you can't do sh** without these trophies, which makes things a bit complicated when the land trophy costs more than $50. You will need Skylanders and vehicles to play these tracks, but you are able to at least do land tracks without any figures since the game gives you instant spitfire and hot streak. And if you need help during races, you can equip boosts beforehand that you can buy with your gear bits. So overall, I like the racing aspect of the game. While I don't think it's as polished as a Mario Kart game and tracks are behind a paywall, each 
Each track is well designed and offers a good challenge when you want to take a break from the main story. You are still able to play the main story with another player, you can play together in races like I mentioned earlier, but what's weird though is only one vehicle can be on the portal at once in the story mode, which means the two players will share the vehicle. One will drive and one will control the weapons. I mean yeah you can easily switch controls between the two of you, but it would have been a lot more fun if both of you were able to control your own vehicles. Definitely a missed opportunity in my opinion. I don't I don't care if the portal is too small man, I just want to be able to use both vehicles. There's really no reason not to play with a supercharged combo. Your Skylander gets extra health when they're paired with their vehicle, so the game doesn't give you any reason to mix and match combinations, which limits you to switch out your vehicle when choosing a different supercharger Skylander. Or at least that's how I felt. Once again, the level cap for Skylanders remains at 20. You are still able to equip hats, check out their upgrades, stats, and toys code and give them nicknames, change ownership, and reset them. You are able to view your vehicle stats and change your ownership as well. Buzz gives you specific quests for each Skylander and vehicle to improve their stats, which is great. And finally, the soul gems you find in the levels are for the supercharger Skylanders. Skylander figures no longer have color bases. The way you tell if it belongs to superchargers is by the engine base. All Skylanders from Spyro's Adventure, Giants, Swap Force, and Trap Team all work. Traps however now work differently. Putting a trap in the portal will allow you to use it as a weapon boost for a short while. And if there is a villain inside, you get their sky stone. Magic items no longer work like they did in previous games. When you load them in, they become legendary treasures, which you can use to decorate the academy. Hey, at least they can still do something, I mean, I hardly ever used them before anyways. I managed to get 17 Skylanders and their vehicles, so I definitely have some favors I want to share. Hammer Slam Bowser uses Koopa Troopas to attack and can turn into Magma Bowser. Turbo Charge Donkey Kong uses his signature barrels to deal damage to enemies. Plus he brought Diddy Kong with him which is pretty cool. Stormblade is probably the fastest Skylander I have ever used. Holy sh**. Nightfall looks badass and has some great hook and hair attacks. High Vault can use his static spear that can make him move faster and do damage to anyone who walks into his electricity. And Bone Bash Roller Brawl is my favorite returning Skylander. She can use her Fang Blades as melee or ranged attacks and you can blow kisses to enemies that will recover your health. Now we have to talk about the other version of this game. Superchargers Racing. Superchargers Racing is available for the Wii and the 3DS, which the starter packs for both include Hammer Slam Bowser, Clown Cruiser, and Stealth Elf. Also, the 3DS version comes with the wireless Swap Force Portal. There was also a Dark Edition starter pack, of course, with dark versions of Bowser and the Clown Cruiser. Yeah, there was a total of three different Dark Edition starter packs. That, that's just insane. So, Superchargers Racing features a campaign that focuses solely on the racing aspect. Both versions don't look good visually, however they're not too bad gameplay wise. I actually found some enjoyment out of it. Depending on which difficulty you choose, you can earn up to 3 stars on 3 different types of races, and you can even take on different challenges such as time trials. Now both the Wii and 3DS versions are the same game, but I personally think the 3DS version is my preferred version. Not only can you take the game on the go, but all of your Skylanders and vehicles are saved in the game, so you don't need to be tethered to a portal the whole time. So it kind of sucks that we don't get a platforming style game on the 3DS, but honestly man, it kind of made sense because both the 3DS and the Wii are very underpowered compared to the other consoles, so I guess it saved them a lot of time and money to develop this racing style aspect. So I have to say, this is not a bad game whatsoever. Skylander Superchargers became one of my favorite games of the series. This might be a little bit controversial, but I actually enjoyed it more than Trap Team. I mean, call me crazy, but it was nice to play a game without running into any game breaking bugs. Although Superchargers runs into the same issues Swap Force had with hour long levels and tedious sections within them, I thought the game was enjoyable and the story of the game was so 
good, it was good enough to see it through to the end. After Chaos helps you defeat the darkness, he agrees to help out the academy until he decides to become evil again. There's a good amount of post game content to do, including challenges you can take on from the characters at the Skylanders Academy and play a Skystones game with Chaos to earn his crown. If you want all three stars from each level, all you need is a vehicle from each terrain type, which makes completion a bit easier, but you will need a vehicle of each elemental type to go through the elemental gates and each supercharger combo to take on operative 11 and 3 Fitch challenges. So I wasn't able to find official sales numbers for superchargers, but the game was nominated for best family game at the game awards of 2015 and favorite video game at kids choice awards of 2016. Skylanders was still doing good, they even released an animated show on Netflix Skylanders Academy. As of making this video, the show has 3 seasons at a total of 38 episodes. Now I never watched the show until preparing for this video. By the time Skylanders Academy came out in 2016, I had fallen out of following the Skylanders franchise. I feel like the show should have been made alongside the third or even the fourth game, but I guess the last game will do. So yeah, th this was my first time watching the entire show. Flag interrupter, just giving these cadets a little memento. <laughs> Yo, what the hell did you just do? But an apology. I got this. <laughs> Yo, stealth out, chill. I'm not vaccinated yet. Where's your mask? Where's your mask? I actually enjoyed Skylanders Academy. Going into it, I thought it was going to be really corny. But the show has some good jokes and has a proper story. The only thing that kind of threw me off was that some of the voice actors are different from the games, Stealth Elf being the more noticeable one. But after a few episodes in, I was totally okay with it after the characters were established. To be honest with you guys, Skylanders in the games never really had a chance to show off much personality. I mean, they would say a few catchphrases and one-liners, but that's about it. This show feels like it fills in that missing personality in the Skylanders that are featured in the show. Besides, we still have the same voice actors for a few characters like Popfizz, Jetpack, Chaos, and Ugh. Why the hell does he look like that? I don't want to go too much into the detail of the story just in case no one has seen the show, but I recommend giving it a watch, especially if you're a Skylanders fan. I will note that the show and the games don't seem like they are canon with each other, but there's still some callbacks that are present in the show. So as I mentioned, Skylanders Academy was releasing its first season on October 28th of 2016 as a Netflix original. And what better way to promote this animated show than to release a new Skylanders game? Skylanders Imaginators. So this game was revealed at E3 of 2016, which was revealed alongside Crash Bandicoot's revival, both in the Crash Insane trilogy and becoming a playable character in the Skylanders franchise. It's about time! While the announcement of Crash and Skylanders didn't really get a reaction from the crowd, it was still a pretty big deal for Skylander fans. Crash was a character that I feel like should have been in the first game alongside Spyro, but better late than never I guess. Now Crash as a Skylander, he plays like Crash, like if you played any of the Crash games before, he works pretty similar while still bringing his own Skylander twist. And of course alongside Crash they also bring back Dr. Neo Cortex, and yeah he's he's not that good a at all actually I, I despise this character. Alongside the crash announcement, they revealed the gimmick for Imaginators, which is the ability to create your own Skylanders. Of course, the way you do that is buying a creation crystal. I'll talk more about the creation crystals when I get to the game itself, but these toys that light up come in one of the 10 elements and allow you to store a custom Skylander of one of the 10 battle classes. Bazooker, Bowslinger, Brawler, Knight, Ninja, Quickshot, Sentinel, Smasher, Sorcerer, and swashbuckler. Also, if you were really into making your own Skylanders, Activision made a mobile app called the Creator App, which you probably heard from Imaginators advertising to you in the loading screen. Now, I never used the Creator App since it doesn't exist anymore, but the Creator App allowed you to make your own Skylander wherever you are and port it over to your game. And something that I thought was really cool was the ability to order a 3D printed figure of your Imaginator that would actually work as a Skyliner in the game. Like, I really wish I did this at least once. 
If you didn't feel like using your imagination or just wanted to use much stronger Skylanders, then you can buy Sensei Skylanders. Sensei Skylanders are the main Skylanders of this game, each belonging to one of the 10 elements and one of the 10 battle classes. Of course, Light and Dark gain the least amount of Skylanders again. You had a roster of brand new characters, Crash Bandicoot and Dr. Neo Cortex, and a handful of villains from Trap Team with updated movesets and even some with new elements. Oh, Oh, also chaos is playable once again but this time with his own figure technically this chaos is a clone that the real chaos created but joined the skylanders because he wanted victory for himself but hey that's one way to explain why you can play as the main villain of the game while kicking the ass of that said villain senseis themselves are the same size as giants swap force and trap master figures and they were the most expensive figures to buy hell they're still the most expensive figures to buy god damn there are a total of 31 sensei figures and 31 unique creation crystals which some of them may have not been released and when you add up the 13 in-game sensei color variants the three legendary creation crystals and the four chess and two adventure pack figures imaginators had a total of 84 figures to collect possibly. Another thing to note is that there were even some figures that were re-released from Swap Force. They probably just did this to give people another chance to buy these figures and of course make more money or maybe they just had some figures left over. I don't know. It was actually pretty interesting to see these figures repackaged once again. So let's talk about the starter pack shall we? Skylanders Imaginators released on October 13th of 2016 for Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3, PS4, and the Wii U. Xbox 360, PS3, and the Wii U are systems that you can play every single Skylanders game on. Here's just a little bit of an exception for the Wii U. You can either play the Wii version of Skylanders Spires Adventure or import the Wii U version from Japan for a hefty price. In the starter pack, you get Kingpin, Golden Queen, the Fire Creation Crystal, the stickers and poster, and a portal which reverted back to the Swap Force design. Portal owners packs became a thing again. You miss out on getting Kingpin and Golden Queen, but at least you don't have to buy an extra portal. Dark Editions made a return. You get dark versions of Kingpin, Golden Queen, and Wolfgang alongside three Imaginite crystals and a gold chest. With the addition of Crash and Dr. Neo Cortex, a special Crash Bandicoot starter pack was available for the PS3 and PS4 that included the two figures. Unlike the Nintendo guest stars, Crash and Dr. Neo Cortex can can be used in any version of Imaginators. Imaginators would be the only game that didn't get a Wii and 3DS release. Of course, several reasons for this is that both the Wii and the 3DS are becoming to be a little bit obsolete and that Imaginators would require more buttons, so it just wouldn't work on the Wii. And another reason is because Imaginators was a launch title for the Nintendo Switch on March 3rd of 2017. And as some of you may know, Skylanders Imaginators for the Switch is the most expensive Skylander game known to man. There's a few reasons for this. One, there weren't a lot of starter packs released for the Switch. It also didn't help that the Switch was damn near hard to find within the first six months of its release. And two, Switch games usually are more expensive than games on other platforms. I mean, not this much expensive, but people like to switch. It allows you to play games both on the TV and on the go, and this is a full Skylanders game that you can play on the go. Plus, no portal is necessary with the Switch. You can scan in your Skylanders using the right Joy-Con, Pro Controller, or on the Switch Lite, and the Skylander is saved to your game. I mean, it's pretty messy since you have to select Skylanders like this? I mean, was it that hard to organize them by elements like the 3DS did? But besides that, I feel like this feature made this version of the game much more desirable. Oh, by the way, the Switch version has Windows so you can go talk to him in order to save your Skylanders progress to the actual figure so you'll be able to use them in the other games. Kind of weird that they didn't even bother to give this man any voice lines, but I mean, I guess he really didn't need them. Skylanders Imaginators had two different modes, the story mode and racing mode. Racing mode is just the same racing part of superchargers which gives you all of the courses without needing the trophies. Of course you'll still need the trophies to be able to capture and use the villains. For some reason the switch didn't have the racing mode which sucked 
because I actually like the racing from Superchargers. Once again, you can choose your difficulty in the story mode from easy, medium, and hard. And once you beat the game, you will have access to nightmare mode. So here is where all the controversy starts. Listen, man. I never play the Skylanders game for its in-depth story, but I really, really didn't care for this story. I mean, the plot is bare bones. Chaos gets a hold of mind magic powers to create an army of Doomlanders that would help him take over Skylands. He gets help from a talking brain and you fight a guacamole monster and you use a cake as a Trojan horse to sneak in and you find out that Chaos stole Jeffax's lunch and Chaos goes super saiyan that's really all i remembered at this point i've been so used to callie and flynn taking you to each level but they are barely featured in this game the star characters are the legacy skylanders like spyro jetvac stealth of eruptor pop Fizz, you know to help sell the show can someone tell me what was the point of giving gilgrunt a part in this game he's not even in the show the levels are okay. I like the fact that they are much shorter than they were in the last game, but they don't even come close to being as creative. I feel like I'm obligated to mention this, but one of the levels is just called Abandoned Amusement Park. It's not creative at all compared to other levels that have been named in the series. I mean, technically there are only 10 levels, but the game extends the gameplay by having 10 elemental areas. Some of them are fine. Others, are just boring. You can access each chapter and elemental realms in the mysterious ancient place, aka the MAP. Woo boy, I need a MAP just to be able to navigate this game hub. One minute you head towards the life realm, then the next you find yourself in the rat kingdom like what the f happened the more i explored the map i actually started to like it a little bit more i just wish you were able to select which chapter you wanted to play in the main menu like you were able to do in the previous games instead of always walking to the level where you first discover the levels the skylanders academy is located in the map here you can talk to eon to take on quests and i guess this replaced the portal master rank or something but completing these quests is just one way to earn you an imaginite chest Coming across these chests are the easiest thing to do because you get them by doing just about anything. You get them from completing levels, just finding them in the levels, bringing books to Hugo, playing the troll radio and crane egg mini games, winning a game of sky stones, chasing snails, beating all the enemies from the battle gong, matching the three gems in the new lock puzzle, adding new sensei and imaginite crystals to your game. Yeah, it's damn near impossible to not find these chests. Imaginite chests unlock common rare, epic, and ultimate customization choices you can use to customize your imaginator. Opening these chests were supposed to seem addictive so you would want to be able to open as many chests as possible to get cool gear. So Activision made it a microtransaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this was so stupid. For one, opening up chests is a whole process to the point where you just want it to be over with. And two, it's so easy to find these chests in the game. All you have to do is play through the entire game a few times just to get everything. So buying Imaginite chests in the console's digital store just didn't make sense. They made these chests that would be bronze, silver, or gold and sold them in blind packages, which makes more sense to me, at least you get to keep something physical, even though they have a one-time use per game, but hey, you get a cute little chest. They also made blue chests which came in certain expansion packs which we'll talk a little bit more about, but these blue chests just automatically give you a whole bunch of predetermined customization stuff that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. I say that customizing and creating an imaginator is by far the funnest part of this game in my opinion. There is so much customization in terms of mixing and matching body parts to create something that makes sense or make something that's just wrong. I will say though it was kind of weird that battle classes just had to be strictly a certain body type. For example the ninja class you can't even have a body you just have one big head and your arms and legs are just attached to that head it, it, it's weird. You can equip gear and set attacks to your character but if you want to use stronger gear or unlock new moves you need to level up. You can give them names and their own catchphrases as well as giving them music. 
Now, you can always change their look anytime you want, but you cannot, I repeat, cannot change their battle class in the game. You see, the reason why setting their battle class is a final decision is so that you feel obligated to go out and buy more creation crystals to use the other battle classes. If you ever bought a creation crystal used, you'll most likely have someone else's weird creation on it already. And I mean, you can change the look of it, but the battle class? <laughs> that ain't gonna happen in Imaginators, Chief. So it sounds like Activision was finally able to put an end to used Skylander sellers, right? <laughs> <laughs> nope! It's possible to fully reset creation crystals by using the 3DS versions of Skylanders. You just place it on the portal and the game thinks the toy is broken so it tries to reset it and voila! You can pick the class you want. If you don't have a 3DS or the game and portal, you can do a similar method using the Wii version of Skylanders Giants. I don't know what's worse, the fact that Activision tried to make it impossible to reset creation crystals or the fact they failed to do so. Either way, the consumers of the used Skylanders market still win and it just takes a few extra steps to reset your creation crystal. While exploring levels, you'll find those Imaginite chests and troll radios while still finding soul gems. You can find sensei related things like the battle gong and the sensei shrines that will unlock an ultimate attack for your sensei. You can also also find legendary selfie frames which you can hang up in the Skylander Academy to give a certain battle class buffs. Yeah, you can take selfies in this game. Honestly, I don't have much of an issue with selfie mode. A lot of games nowadays are beginning to include photo modes where you can take some pretty cool snapshots. Imaginators also encourages you to take pictures by giving you those buffs and including selfie spots where you can get gold. My main issue with selfie modes is that there's a limit of 20 pictures you can have in your gallery. Like what's the point of putting all of these selfie spots in levels if you're going to make players delete pictures every time you need to take a new one? This totally disrupts the flow of the game and eventually I just started to ignore the selfie spots. And of course you can play all of these levels with another player. So Skylanders can still reach up to level 20 for the first time ever. You are able to upgrade your Skylanders anytime you want which is great. As well as claiming ownership and resetting the figure. Giving your Skylanders hats is no longer a thing. Probably to keep the feature exclusive to Imaginators. But if your Skylander did have a hat before, it will show up in the game. Leveling up Imaginators works differently. The max level starts out at 15, but every time you add a sensei to your game, the max level increases by 1. I believe if you were able to get all the senseis and the in-game color variants, the max would be level 64. It would have been 65 if they released Heartbreaker Buckshot, and like I mentioned earlier, you are able to customize your Imaginators looks, powers, and personality anytime you like. The soul gems you find in the game are the Sensei Skylanders and the 10 battle classes for Imaginators. All Skylanders from previous games work in Imaginators as long as you have a portal that supports Swap Force figures. I don't know about you guys, but playing as most of the older Skylanders was pretty much impossible. Skylanders were just weak and got their asses handed to them. Magic items and traps get you some gold and register in your collection, and vehicles get you an Imaginite chest. Imaginators did have adventure packs where you put the figure of the location on the portal and the level is unlocked, but some levels were unlocked through the Skylanders themselves. Crash and Dr. Neo Cortex unlocked Thumpin' Wumpa Islands, which is easily the best level of the game by the way. Wildstorm unlocks Cursed Tiki Temple, and Robo unlocks Lost Imaginite Mines. Like, why did they release actual adventure packs if they were just planning to just have certain Skylanders unlock the levels themselves? I don't know, I guess I'm just really salty that the prices of Wildstorm and Robo are just so high. I mean, it's a shame. People actually worked on these extra levels and hardly anyone got to play them because so little of these Wildstorm and Robo packs were released. Well, 
At least you can buy the NFC cards for pretty cheap. I made sure I expanded my Imaginators collection during my second playthrough of this game, and I definitely have my favorites. Kingpin hits fast and hard with his penguin combo. Golden Queen's Soul Gem move is a neat callback from her trap team boss fight where she becomes giant. Aurora was great to use because of how fast she moves around levels using her flash dash. Taekwon Crow. I mean, he summons a giant buzzer beak. That, that's just pretty cool. Even though the senseis were stronger than the imaginators, I still had fun using some of my creations. Hot Sauce was my fire knight, Poppy was my water bow slinger, Bloom's Day was my life bazooka, and Scarcrow was my earth quick shot imaginator. I really had fun making these characters. I even tried to make Sir Hoodington, which is the popular imaginator example that's on the cover of the game. So like imaginators and Sky Skylanders Academy was going to be the last Skylanders product we would have from the Skylanders franchise. However, Activision released a new Skylanders mobile game that was revamped on December 3rd of 2020 and still works as of making this video, Skylanders Ring of Heroes. So this is a turn-based RPG that lets you create a team of Skylanders and play as portal masters that got sent to Skylands and stop chaos from using the Book of Dark Magic. I only played the game for a few minutes, but it, it's honestly pretty cool. Of course, the game is free to play, but you'll have to either grind for gems or spend real money to be able to get more Skylanders. You know, your classic mobile game stuff. Now, I will admit, I didn't like Skylanders Imaginators for the first time I played it, but after getting a few more Skylanders and Creation Crystals and spending more time with the game, I started to enjoy it a lot more. While this game lacks an intriguing story and unique and exciting levels, and the god awful Skylanders selection menu in the Switch version, I will not live that down. It's a good Skylanders game at its core. Obviously, the more Skylanders you have, the more enjoyment you will get from the Skylanders franchise, so having a bunch of creation crystals let you experience the best part of this game, which of course is the customization of Imaginators. Depending on how determined you are to find every creation part there is, you're going to be very busy with this game. There's also some post-game content that involves you helping the brain with certain side quests. Yeah, I didn't care. The game is pretty short, so you might have time to try and get all three stars from each level. Depending on the level, the three stars may differ to what you need to do, but of course, at least getting the first star, all you have to do is beat the level for the first time. So honestly, I thought this was the worst Skylanders game of the franchise. However, I, I feel like it saved itself a little bit. It just took buying a whole Skylander lot that had some Imaginator stuff, I was able to create some more Imaginators. And that concludes this definitive A Look Back at Skylanders video. All six mainline Skylander games, mobile titles, and Netflix show were covered and I couldn't be happier with the trip down memory lane. Whether this is your first video of the series or you've seen every video, I want to say thank you for supporting the channel. Skylanders will always be an important game series to me and I'm happy I was able to talk about it to both the amazing gaming and Skylander communities. It's been a lot of fun, time consuming, but it's been fun. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know which Skylanders game was your favorite or least favorite down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching and of course, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. I wonder if Spyro and Crash will ever come back. Dream.